This is Twit. The cover story of the April 23rd edition of The Nation magazine focuses on something that we've heard a lot about over the years, but until very recently had little conclusive evidence to even point to. The issue of cell phone radiation, what its effects might be on the humans that live, breathe, maybe obsess over the technology every waking hour of the day. And even deeper than that, kind of talking about the industry that may or may not be complicit in either letting that information see the light of day or hiding it from the public. Joining us to talk about some recent discoveries and dive a little deeper into this issue is Mark Hurstgard, the nation's investigative editor and co-author of How Big Wireless Made Us Think That Cell Phones Are Safe, a special investigation. Welcome to the show, Mark. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So first of all, you, you specify in your article that you aren't necessarily arguing that wireless technology is dangerous or is not, but rather that the cell phone industry has long campaigned that they are safe when in fact there are reasons to believe that it might not be so. Uh, so I guess let's start there. Talk a little bit about kind of the, the underpinnings, the foundation of your investigation here. Sure. The reasons that exist are, ironically enough, the very science that the cell phone industry itself funded back in the 1990s. Uh, they put together a research program and their own scientist told them at the end of that, we have the, the smoking gun letter dated October 7, 1999 to the CEO of AT&T and the CEOs of 27 other major companies that headed the trade association for the wireless industry. Uh, and that letter from Dr. George Carlo said that um, there were serious questions about the possibility of cell phone radiation causing both cancer and genetic damage. Now that letter from 1999 made it clear there was not definitive proof of this, uh, these dangers but rather that there were serious questions about it. And in particular, the scientists said that the industry should not be telling customers that this is perfectly safe and certainly shouldn't be saying that about children. And what's interesting about that to me is uh, we see here the parallel between big wireless and how it used the very same public relations playbook that big tobacco pioneered and big oil perfected to lie to the public about their products. And in both of those previous cases, Big Tobacco and Big Oil, just like Big Wireless, were told privately by their own scientists that their technologies caused real, or, or raised, I should say, real health risks. And what did those industries do? They kept those warnings to themselves, and when they spoke to the public, they acted like there was absolutely no problem. In fact, they actively denied that there was a problem. It's so interesting that you compare it to tobacco and um, other older industries, because I think of this as really a problem of our time, the time of Twitter, and I hate to use the term, but fake news. You write that um, that there, uh, the industry doesn't have to win the scientific argument about safety. It only has to keep the argument going. And it feels like that is so easy when we're just like reading 140 characters and not really paying attention. And we just kind of want to believe what we want to believe. Either we want to believe that, you know, that, there, that every cell phone is going to cause cancer or we want to believe like no they're fine and we love them so i mean how is this really different in this age of just fast fast internet i think you're right that it is easier now to for an industry to to create the appearance of doubt um, but it very definitely was something that that big oil and big tobacco did as well even long before there was uh twitter and 140 characters that were uh, dominating the public discourse uh, you know, it's interesting, even though all of us sort of know uh, that smoking cigarettes can give you lung cancer, uh, the power of that industry is so great, political power, that those products are still out there to be sold and bought by the consumer. Those are products that, when used as directed, will kill you. And yet, there they are out there in the marketplace. Likewise, likewise with climate change, the, the overwhelming scientific consensus says that we are racing towards absolute climate catastrophe on this planet. And yet the political power of those corporations is so great that uh, we continue to, to uh, advance and expand our production of fossil fuels. So I think that the real lesson here is uh, that all of us need to be very wary of corporate power. And the, the uh, ideology of a corporation is 
always to grow, to get bigger, to put profits ahead of every other consideration. And I think that's very, very uh, pervasive in our political economy. And that's why we thought this story was so important to do, because, as you say, everyone uh, is, is using this technology now. Yeah, and using is an understatement. I mean, everyone is living on this technology. Um, you know, so, so and they're addicted to this technology. For and that's sure. another parallel. You know, big tobacco consciously addicted its customers by adding nicotine uh, to their cigarettes. And big wireless, we, we now know, uh, the, the, the top people have now confessed to this, that, that they consciously, deliberately addict people, giving you little dopamine rushes with your likes on Twitter and Facebook. So uh, it's a very insidious uh, enterprise that we're talking about here. Sure. And I feel like there's there's a little bit, like I feel like the conversation has changed a little bit in this. Last month, the U.S. National Toxicology Program uh, showed what they said to be clear evidence of heart tumors in rats after exposure to RF radiation. And this happened after a peer review uh, that actually upgraded its conclusions. Prior to that, the conclusions were, you know, were much more leveled. But afterwards, after peer review, they did what doesn't happen very often. They upgraded it to say that it is, uh, it shows clear evidence of, of a direct relation here. Would you say that this is a big turning point in our understanding or does that just cloud things with what you also talk about, which is the wargaming of science? I think it could be a big change in our understanding uh, with one huge caveat here, which is that there's almost been no mass media coverage of that National Toxicology Program peer review. That's true. So how can the average American know about this if you're not hearing about it from television or radio or uh, websites uh, and, and news outlets? I think there's a there's a real problem too because I think the the tech press has been accused of ignoring this issue because if, if I tell you that that your cell phone that's in your hand might cause cancer, then you're going to put it down and stop looking at the ads on my tech website. Yeah. And so, you know, we've been accused of that. But there's also, like, I, I, that's not the way, I mean, responsible journalists don't act that way. But my thing is, I believe in science. So I've always said, well, there, there's been no scientific proof. But you point out that laugh, lack of definitive proof that a technology is harmful does not mean that it's safe. So, you know, am I going to continue to hand over uh, a cell phone to my 13-year-olds and, you know, whose brains have not been fully developed um you know is is that smart so it, it's 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 really complicated i feel like it is it is different than tobacco or oil because you do have not just the information but you have all these you know geeky people like us saying like give me the science show me the science but that doesn't necessarily mean it's safe if there hasn't been any science to say that it's not safe well, I, I hear what you're saying there. It's a logical fallacy to think that because uh, we don't have definitive proof that something is dangerous, that it is safe. But so, you know, and, and our article was not about trying to litigate the question of whether the cell phones are safe or not. Uh, but in the process of investigating, we did come across a fairly interesting uh, fact, I think, which is that most of the science that is on that is cataloged by the National Institutes of Health. You can go to their database. Most of the studies do show a health impact, either related to cancer or genetic uh, damage to DNA breakage and so forth. Most of them do show that. And this gets back to the previous point about how industry uh, keeps the argument going. Uh, very, very few news articles have gone to the trouble of looking at those uh, data that's there inside the NIH database and saying, wow, you know, actually, most of the science does show an impact. Now, why is that? Well, partly it's because, again, like big tobacco and big oil, big wireless has funded its own science to say, surprise, surprise, that there's no health impacts. And so one of the things that we came across in investigating this piece is that is the huge difference between science that is independently funded by, say, universities or public agencies uh, and the science that is industry funded. Industry funded science uh, of cell phone radiation's health effects is two and a half times less likely to find a health impact than independently financed science. That should tell you a lot, and it should make you worried about whether you should give a cell phone to your 13-year-old child. I have a 13-year-old daughter myself. 
Sure, sure. Now, uh, um, another interesting point from the article. I mean, it, it's a fascinating article. Definitely need to read it. Not, you know, and like like you're saying, it's not necessarily about is it safe or not. It's really about kind of the the efforts behind the scenes to tell you whether it's safe or not. Uh, but the nation was unable to find any insurance company that would willfully sell a liability policy covering cell phone radiation. What does that seem to imply based on what you guys were looking into? You know, the insurance industry is the world's biggest industry. They are the biggest investors in the world. They, they tend to take the longer view. They have to. Obviously, you're, in, you're insuring things for 20, 30 years. Uh, they know what the science says. They know that there's all kinds of liability lawsuits out there and that the science is not as clear cut as the industry says. And so the, one of the guys that the insurance execs we talked to literally laughed when we asked, could you write us a, a policy? He said, why would we do that? Uh, and I think that tells you that when the money is on the line, the big money does not want to risk. Uh, and they, they, they know that the science is by no means as uh, clear cut as uh, the big wireless industry wants to tell us. Yeah. Uh, fascinating stuff. I'm really happy that we had the opportunity to get you on the show. Mark Hersgaard, uh with The Nation, thenation.com. Definitely check out this week's cover story uh, on the magazine and you can read all about it. You can also find it online. Mark, we really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us about this today. Well, thank you for including me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll Thanks, talk Mark. to you soon and take care.